let's have a look at the phase modulation options within our two wavetables. Now we have a section at the bottom of the wavetables called the auxiliary section, and that has two phase modulation oscillators. You can see their wave shapes here that we can use to modulate our main wavetables. Now we touched upon this when we had a look at the wavetable modes. What this essentially does is turn Massive X into an FM synth. Now these waveforms don't themselves make any sound and instead they're used as the modulator signal within the FM operator. So essentially they're used to modulate the carrier signal which is our main wavetables. And we also have this aux level here and this offers us even more flexibility in terms of our phase modulation options because we can actually route in whatever signal we want to modulate our main wavetables. We can look at that later. Now the feature set for these two phase modulating oscillators are identical so they're mirrored. So first of all we have the type of waveform we're going to use and these range from kind of pure sine and triangle waves to variations of triangle and sine waves which are generally what you use for phase modulation or frequency modulation. So next up we have pitch here. Now as we've already seen we can choose a ratio, a fixed pitch or key tract. So this could be a ratio of the MIDI note that we play, so the moment it's going to be equal. If we change that to two, it's going to be double the pitch that we play on the keyboard. Alternatively, key tract is going to be mapped to the MIDI note. And fix, as we already established, is going to be locked to the MIDI note number, that being middle C. Let's put it back onto the ratio. Now we can modulate the pitch of our phase oscillators using these modulation sources underneath. Now for each of them we have a dial which allows us to dial in the amount of modulation that's going to be taking place and that can obviously be modulated. Okay so the way that we do this is to actually route one of our phase modulators to one of our wavetable oscillators and then this amount is going to determine the amount we're going to be doing it. Okay let's actually just make this a pure sine wave. Now as we bring up the amount we're starting to introduce that phase modulation. Let's try some of the different waveforms. At the moment we're modulating at the same pitch as the note I'm playing on the MIDI keyboard. Let's try a different ratio. Let's try detuning it a bit. Let's pitch down our main oscillator. Take the detune off. Let's try routing an envelope to modulate the amount. Go to the parameters of this. Let's just turn our decay level down. And here we get that snap at the beginning of the note. Increase the amount. So by modulating that parameter, we can introduce varying amounts of phase modulation over time. And by choosing different waveforms, we get different results. And of course, changing the pitch as well. Very dubstep, that one. So, this enables us to use Massive X as essentially a wavetable synth. It's really cool. Okay, let's just reset this sound. So, as I said before, we have this aux option within here as well. So, within the routing tab, from here, we can basically choose to route whatever we want into this auxiliary phase modulation 
input here. So let's say we wanted to break that, take the output of our first oscillator and route it into this phase modulation auxiliary input. And we choose to modulate the phase of this second oscillator via this aux input using the amount We can now choose to modulate the phase of our second oscillator via our first. And now using this amount knob here, we can determine the amount of modulation that takes place. Once again, we try modulating this. Pretty cool. So that's using the auxiliary input. Okay, so hopefully you can see from this video that you have loads of functionality to allow you to use MassiveX as essentially an FM synth.